there. Welcome back. And uh, I will say that <clears throat> I, want, well, I have a question for you, Mr. Fed. Yeah, go ahead. I'm here to answer them. Where do you think the Pirates rank in, in, in um, retail sales right now? I think it's like gonna, caps, shirts, you know. You're talking about in all of sports and or no, baseball? No, no, in baseball. Pirates and all of baseball. Well, you got to have Yankees and the Red Sox, number one. So I, 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 I'm going to say five. That'd be amazing if they're that hot. On Sunday, this was this was last Sunday, not yesterday. This is a story from Forbes magazine written last week, and they said as of last Sunday, the Pirates were the number two selling MLB team on Fanatics.com, one of the largest online retailers of officially licensed sports merchandise. That is amazing. Sales jumped more than 50% last week compared to the previous one, which was the biggest percent increase of any MLB team on Fanatics.com. Well, it's so a the great people around town. baseball are. No, this yeah, but this is it's, it's happening here. But it's, yeah, but 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 if you go to you know Steeler Road games, if you go to Penguin Road games, they're yeah. full of Pitt, Pittsburgh yeah. people, and you're going to start if you start looking at these road games, you you see the stands full of people wearing black and gold. Yeah, this is a huge sports town where people, when they matriculate from here, continue their allegiances. And you used to be embarrassed to wear this stuff. You're definitely not embarrassed to wear it anymore. No. It is the cool thing to do. The Pirates are cool now right now. to be a You're Pirate right. fan. Right. So now you go to the you, – you look, turn on these road games. Look at Chicago. If you go back, there's a, there were a lot of Pirate fans at those games. Yeah. A lot of people were in black and gold, even, even in the, the series over the weekend. And when you start getting into some of these other cities like Atlanta or some of these cities where you have a lot of um, transplants – um, you're, you're going to see, you go down to Miami, half the stadium or more is going to be Pirate fans. Well, there's some numbers here from this Forbes magazine uh, piece. This was prior to, well, this was, I guess, uh, this was, this wouldn't be up to the last home, and their last home game was last Sunday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, total tickets already sold for the season, including games still to be played, are up 11% versus last year. So whatever they drew last year, they're already going to do 10% better, 11% better. Mm -hmm. So, Eleven uh, percent of what they draw last year, one eight. They do. They did pretty well last year. Yeah. So that's that's one hundred eighty thousand more people they're going to draw right there based on the advance sales, and you would think that unless they have another collapse, they're going to have some big gates if they stay in the pennant race. Uh, per game attendance is still running slightly behind last year, though. Uh, Coonley, being the uh, CEO, expects final 2013 attendance to trail only 2001 when PNC opened and 2.4 million fans came through the turnstiles. Um, <clears throat> they, uh, there's some other stuff here. The, the Pirates have uh, seen some their, – their, their, um, their money situation is getting much better because fans are giving the Nuttings their money. What happens? I know I, I don't believe that there's going to be another. I don't. I, I'm saying I'm not saying there's. It's not possible that they fade and don't uh, win the division or get in the playoffs. I think that's still a, a, a decent possibility. I don't think there's a chance there's going to be another collapse like we've seen in the last two years. But what if they do? Short of a collapse that comes close to the last two years. What happens to the fan base if they disappoint them again by just absolutely stinking the second half and you know finishing five games over 500 and ten games out of a playoff spot? I think it just depends upon how young the team is. I I, I don't I don't think a collapse is gonna um, is gonna do anything to the gate. I mean, it may do something to season tickets next year, which I think season tickets are gonna really go through the roof if there isn't a collapse. Yeah. So that's the best way to put it. I, I don't I don't see it's gonna be a, a a financial problem or fans abandoning them other than I think next year's season ticket base is gonna be tremendous barring a collapse. Mm -hmm. and you're gonna see some real dramatic people are gonna people are this is a very smart, very um this is a very smart uh, uh, sports town, and, and, and people really live, eat, and breathe their pro and college sports here. And uh, you're going to see it. You're going to see it. People realizing that the Pirates are, are, are in a window here where they're going to start winning, and you're going to see season tickets really go up. Yeah, really go up. Well, they'll go dramatically. They'll skyrocket if they get in the playoffs this year. Next year, will and be, they are going to get. Next the year playoffs. will be their best year ever at PNC Park. Well, that'd be they, tough to beat that first year. Well, they almost it. sold out every game. They'll beat it because they sold out every game that year because everybody wanted tickets to PNC the park, park. Right. Yeah. And next year, if they have a winning team this year, not a winning team, but a uh, a postseason team, uh, I just hope for their sake that it's not. If they get into the playoffs, it's not a one and done, one game, and they all the excitement, and you get in and you lose. 
Could happen, you know. You get, I, lo- I love this. I love what the, <clears throat> the what baseball did by by they, okay. They added another team, but they made yeah. it well worth your while to win the division. I like that. Yeah, hockey used to be like that. Yeah, many years ago, and it was only a while. They always like a three year window where hockey was like that. Right. Remember the first round series was best of three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I like that. I think that if it, you, that you should be rewarded for the regular season. So, I could see it happening. I could see the Pirates getting in as one of those one and done teams. I no. definitely see that happening. We talked about the All Star Game, and your son was involved and won the uh, what? What was the pitch con- and run last year? He yeah. won it at yeah. the All Star Game in Kansas is City. Your son? Now he's thirteen. He was twelve. He's okay. the reigning twelve year old pitch and run. Champion. Now uh, does he go back as a thirteen year old? No, or he didn't even try this year. He was doing too many tournament balls. We never yeah. even got to one of the. Con- you have to go through like seven different things. Oh, okay. And well, but you got a, you got a pretty time. good uh, behind the scenes feel for what goes on at the All Star Games, didn't you? Yeah, we were. It was awesome. I spent uh, a lot of time. Then I had to fly back for Skylight's media day. Believe it or not. So I you didn't missed go to the, game. the game. Nope, I missed the game. But I was you were there, there for, the, for like how many days? I was there for the Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of it. And, it was and unbelievable. What was your was what? How did your impressions of what goes on at the All Star Game change, if at all, from being looking at it from that perspective? I, it changed dramatically because I took it, it. It it made me kick myself all over the place for not taking advantage of it when it was here twice. Okay, and I went in what way? I would have been down there. I I was at the All Star festivities with my son. It was literally from sun up till sundown. Yeah. So we would start at like eight in the morning and go till like ten at night. Yeah. And I would I was crazy not to do that when it was here. It's it's just a great. I mean, uh, from the fan fest, which maybe wasn't as good as it was then, yeah. but I bet you it was when it was here in Pittsburgh, especially the second time. From the fan fest to um, all the, the to the to just the the the, the workout, which I have really enjoyed the workout. Now you yeah, were down on the field though. Yeah, I was on yeah. the field, but still, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I wasn't. Connor was. I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. I was in the stands. Okay. Uh, my son was on the field with him, uh, but you know, it was just it, it, it was really cool to watch the greatest players in the world all together for that those three or four days. But I like that fan fest because they had all – and I called you from there. I was in the fan fest yeah. and we did a yeah. show. Yeah. And you're talking about, you know, probably 40, 30 of the greatest living players of all time are there. <laughs> They're just hanging out there. They're signing autographs. They're doing little radio shows. The old timers. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you go in there and there's, you know, there's, there's Mike Schmidt or there's um, – Willie Mays. Uh, Willie Mays and then Hank Aaron. They're all hanging out there. Right. 